I'm Jeannie Lee. I'm a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School and uh, the Massachusetts General Hospital. So for the past 20 years, my lab has been interested in a process called X chromosome inactivation. And this process is a wonderful model by which to understand how genes are turned on and off. And because of what we've learned in the past couple of decades, we're in a position now to be able to turn back on in a pharma pharmacological way uh, genes uh, on the X chromosome that uh, help to treat various excellent intellectual disabilities, including the Fragile X syndrome. I'm not a stranger to Fragile X syndrome. I uh, started my research career in Fragile X uh, as a PhD student back in the early 1990s. And it was in fact Fragile X that uh, got me interested in X chromosome inactivation. And so 20 years later, uh, we've sort of come full circle in um, uh, applying our knowledge of X inactivation to uh, treat Fragile X. We are enormously grateful to the Fraxa Foundation for providing the research report that allows uh, us and many other laboratories to continue to make progress towards a treatment and to better understand the disease in general. Uh, without Fraxa funding, we wouldn't have uh, Dr. Hungu Lee's work. My name is Hongu Lee and I'm a postdoctoral researcher in Jin Yilin's lab. And now I have been working about three years to study Fragile X syndrome. At the beginning, I wanted to study about this uh, repetitive sequences. And uh, repetitive sequences can trigger the silencing uh, for some unknown mechanism. And I was interested in uh, to understand how this uh, silencing happens. And then, this, when I learned about this fragile X syndrome, which uh, is caused by this CGG, CGG repeat, I thought this would be really interesting to study and very important to uh, learn and study. We can uh, reactivate the normal FMR1 gene uh, in patient cells uh, by treating with uh, this cocktail of small molecules. And um, it's important to realize that uh, there's an advantage to this strategy of reactivation because it gets at the root cause of the disorder, which is the absence of FMR1 protein. And moreover, we're doing this in such a way that we do not introduce uh, foreign genetic material uh, into patient cells. Uh, we're utilizing a resource that is already present within patient cells uh, to treat fragile X syndrome. Here we're, we're deeply committed to um, pursuing a treatment for Fragile X syndrome. So Fragile X has special meaning to many of us in the lab. Uh, for me personally, when I began my career studying the Fragile X syndrome, as I mentioned, uh, as a PhD student in the early 1990s, and now I've come first full circle, it's Fragile X that led me to X inactivation, and now X inactivation is leading me back to Fragile X. But beyond myself, um, uh, many lab members here uh, know people who have Fragile X syndrome, um, and in fact, um, I have permission to share this, but uh, a valued member of the lab has family who's uh, affected by Fragile X syndrome. So again, we're here, we're, we're deeply committed to solving the Fragile X problem. I would say to, to families that um, not to lose hope, because I think we're in a position now to, to make a real difference uh, to the lives of patients and to, the, and to their families. And so. We would like to take, we meaning the uh, scientific community, would like to take many different approaches towards treating fragile X. And so we're taking the X chromosome reactivation approach, but there are many other ways. There's gene therapy, there's gene editing, and I think it's important for uh, funding agencies to uh, actually support all of these different methodologies because uh, at the end of the day, it may be that we need all of them in order to make a difference to patients. Lastly, I would like to thank both the Fraxa Research Foundation and the Pierce Family Foundation for their generous support of our Fragile X research.